Hello! Once again I've been experimenting with OpenGL shaders and I have something to show you again. This program builds a model from a parametric function, which you can see here, which is hard-coded. Unfortunately, I have planned on putting the function in some external file which gets read, but it's far, more, uh, it's far easier to just have the function hard-coded in the program. Anyways, this program builds a model from this function and then renders it using different shaders. Another big part of the program is this shadow that you can see. I had pretty big difficulties implementing it the way I wanted, well, to have it work at all actually. It, uh, there are some matrix operations uh, matrix operations which you have to get just right and it took a lot of experimenting for me. Anyways, now that it's running we can play around with it a bit. As I said, it uses a parametric function to build the model which you can see and I have defined some. This is one which I like pretty much so we will be getting back to it later. But let's go back to uh, an easier one. Since uh, the function is hard-coded, we have to recompile the program each time we change the model. But it's a relatively small program, so it doesn't take long at all. So this is a simple torus or donut. It's not really interesting at all. Let's see. This is kind of nice like a warped sphere, I like it, and even better yet, a warped torus, I like this a lot, and there are some more, for example, what's this, ah yes, this is a, well, it's a functional right. It has three peaks and I like how you can see the shadow projected from these peaks. The shadows still have some artifacts like when I wrote it, rotate it like this there are some patterns which are really ugly. I use shadow mapping for this kind of shadow generation and it's one of the, one of the disadvantages. If you get a particular angle you get artifacts like this and they are pretty hard to avoid. I had to do a lot of tweaking to get it looking this good at all, so they are hard to get right. So let's go back to one of the earlier models again and let's play with the shaders. So this one again. Fortunately the shader program is loaded at runtime and compiled by the graphics driver so if we want to play around with it we can just change the code and reload it and we don't even have to restart the program so we can change the code that is used to render the pixels now the shading is a bit different it is a more metallic look i like this one or you can set the parameters for diffuse lighting and ambient lighting. Now it looks different. We, well, you can play around with it a lot. Another feature this program has is loading textures. Uh, textures. And I have played around with normal maps, specifically bump maps in this program. If we go to this workspace, we see GIMP has this image opened. And if we load this as a texture and use it as a pump, pump map, it will look like this. The, the texture that is loaded is used to modify the normals. And that way the lighting calculations are done differently. And the surface looks a bit rough now. We can change... Well, can change some stuff. Oh, it's a bit less intense. There are a lot.
lot of parameters to play around with. Uh, also, we can use this texture to modify not only the normals but the vertices themselves. We need to change the vertex shader then. Let's see, uncomment this and comment this. Same in the shadow shader. As you can see, I have a lot of commented parts from playing around with it, from tweaking the shadows, all that stuff. Now, you can see the edges of the model have been changed too. And the shadow calculations have been modified too. So if you look there, you can see the rough shadow line. Uh, the shader also gets a time input. We can use the time input to modify the shader program. So I have already programmed it to move the texture along one of, one of its coordinates. It's look, it looks a bit weird, but it's kind of nice. That's it. Goodbye.